I want you to imagine this scenario. For years, you've been working onerous hours at your job. Then, as if by a miracle, you get offered a new position. Just one catch. Before you take on the new job, you have to relocate. There's no transportation either, so you're going to have to make the trip in stages. At first, the journey is nice. Sunshine, warm weather, but soon you're thirsty and hungry and there isn't a place to eat for miles. Your spouse reminds you that they'd suggested you bring extra snacks for the trip, but you declined. It's the straw that breaks the camel's back. Angry words pour out of your mouth as you vent all your pent up frustration and disappointment at your partner. This scenario approximates what's taking place in our weekly Torah portion on a micro level. Only the most patient among us would be able to weather such a situation without losing our cool at least once. Frustration, disappointment, and physical discomfort cause molehills to become mountains. And for the Israelites, it is causing disruption in every tent. Soon the whole camp is melting down, leaving poor Moses to pick up the pieces. It's unsurprising that such an environment would be perfect for a man like Korach, a rebel rouser of the first order and an opportunist to boot, to use everyone's ill temper to attempt a coup. When people are frustrated and they feel they're being ignored, they will look for those they think are listening. Korachs, who appear in every generation, in every walk of life, can be identified by the veneer of empathy they show to the disenfranchised. The problem is that while they seem to be championing a cause, they are in fact only championing themselves. They use the energy and anger of others to sow chaos. So be wary of Korachs. As our Torah portion teaches, they lead only to division and destruction. Shabbat Shalom.